you know, I've been looking at my older videos, <laughs> and they are to die laughing. <laughs> but they were my first video, so um, <laughs> I was trying. I can say I was trying. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to update, and sorry, I just finished doing my bed. Um, it <laughs> Talk about the ADA. Uh, much earlier, it was one of my first videos. <laughs> and <laughs> I was, I don't know what was wrong. Something was wrong with my hair. Um, my, my voice is clear. The sound is good, but <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> so let's do this video again. Let's do it better and clearer. We're going to talk a little bit about the ADA. Uh, so there's a little bit more understanding of what the ADA is and uh, where you can look it up. And I will leave all those links down below in the description box. Uh, as I was saying, you know, I did an, a video. It was one of my first videos. <laughs> so <laughs> it's to laugh about. But, you know, I was trying back then. So. <laughs> we're gonna look at <laughs> we're gonna look at the topic of ADA again, but a little bit more clear on how it supports you and me. All right. So, what is the ADA? Well, the ADA is a federal law. <laughs> it's not a suggestion. It's a federal law. So I'm gonna move my camera a little bit, which I didn't back then, a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> so. The ADA is a federal law, and um, and it talks about accessibility, of course. It talks about a lot of things, but it talks about accessibility. You know, we should be able to go wherever the public goes. <laughs> we should, <laughs> because there are ins and outs to the ADA. The state has its own variation. It has to have all all of what the federal law of the ADA has, plus a little, a few other interpretations that the state adds into the ADA. So you have the state level, but you have the federal overall ADA. So if you're in a wheelchair, you should be able to go wherever the public goes, right? Eh. <laughs> nope. And why is that? Well, it depends on when the building was built. Uh, sometimes they have permission not to have it accessible because it's an older building, blah, blah, blah. However, however, um, you know, even though it's an older building, say a museum, say a restaurant, say, you know, buildings that were built before 1990, before the ADA was written, um, they can, of their own volition, of, of their own, uh, in some kind of dialogue with you, they can make it accessible so you can get in there, of their own goodwill, per se. Uh, the law, if you took them to court, they wouldn't be forced to because of you know the exclusion pieces of the ADA in which they have permission not to make it accessible because it would be an extreme uh, uh, hazard. No, not a hazard, but it would be uh, too much money to make it accessible. However, <laughs> there are where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So let's say there's a restaurant. It's, it's an old restaurant. It's made out of brick. It's a beautiful restaurant. It was built in the 1800s, so that's way before <laughs> 1990, of course. But you love this restaurant. A lot of people love this restaurant. And you want to be able to go into this restaurant with your family and, and share good and fun times and good meals, let's say, per se. It's an example. Um, and, but you can't 
because there's steps and stairs all over the place. And their bathrooms are not accessible either. So, so that's one thing that you can talk to the management and say, hey, you know, my family really loves their restaurant and I'm in a wheelchair, I can't do stairs. So is there a way that you can make it accessible? Would you be open to making it accessible? And of course, you talk family, you talk big groups, you talk about, you know, the love for the restaurant. You know, they might say, hey, you know, we'll look into this, um, you know, and you might know the building well enough that you can say, hey, even if it's on the side, even, you know, they can make a new door, they can make a new entranceway that um, has a ramp. You know, all kinds of things can be done. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way, you know, and they can raise funds or you can raise funds or whatever it might be, you know, they could put it towards, you know. I don't like it when they put it in the back. <laughs> so, <laughs> but sometimes it has to happen that way. Like, let's say the kitchen. A lot of times in these older restaurants, if you go through the kitchen, there are no steps to get into the kitchen. I don't know why, but I guess to bring the garbage out and that kind of stuff, they've always made it, you know, that they don't have to. Uh, they don't have any steps in that area. So, um, so with special permission, you might be able to go through the kitchen, but you don't want to do that. I don't want any restaurant or movie theater or anything like that putting us in the back because it has a connotation. <laughs> We don't want that to be seen, or we don't want you to be seen entering our restaurant. So that's one of the things that um, doors in the back are a little uncomfortable for me uh, because I don't know what what message they're sending. So, but do you understand? It's just the dialogue that you would have with that facility that is key. You know that relationship is key before you take them to court, and then you learn that they are in that clause, that they don't have to have a building that's accessible. So if they're built before 1990, they can be excluded from the ADA. However, that relationship and that dialogue with them could help them um, out of goodwill make it accessible for you and for others in wheelchairs and crutches and everything else, for grandma, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's what the ADA does for us. You know, anything built after 1990, sorry, you have to be accessible. So you can have dialogue with, with agencies and organizations that are not accessible, and they were built after 1990. Uh, so there you can have a goodwill conversation, a goodwill uh, arrangement or take them to court. That's when you take them to court. And that's when they will be forced and fined for um, not working in something that's accessible, knowing that the, uh, they are under the ADA and regulations of the ADA on the federal level and the state level. Because the public, if this is a place where the public goes, then you should be able to uh, as well. So that is what the ADA does for you. Um, and if you have a service dog, same thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to look into these links of the ADA and get to know them and be familiar with it. Uh, be familiar with what needs to be, because some people ask, well, I'm afraid to sue. No, don't be afraid to sue. If this building was built after 1990 and they'd be fined before or they're gonna be fined, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whether it's an apartment, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a movie theater that was built after 1990 or 1990 and, and beyond, then, you know, goodwill conversation before. That is awesome, good communication always, you know, is the first line of defense for those who are asking, do I sue? Am I afraid to sue? You know, I'm afraid to sue because blah, blah, blah. But a uh, first line of defense is, is good dialogue, good communication first. And then if they don't cooperate and they just shuffle their feet and 
uh, drag their feet, then then you say, okay, then then we'll have this discussion again, but in court. So that's when they start. <laughs> that's when they'll start to move. Say, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're sorry. You know, and then they'll start um, looking for a place to put in an accessible entrance and exit and accessible bathrooms. Uh, those are the two big things. In apartments, apartment complexes, same thing. You know, there was a gal, and I'm very proud of her. This happened not long ago uh, on this site that we were talking about the ADA and we were talking about housing and apartments and she was in a wheelchair. I don't know if she was in a wheelchair when she first moved in or or if she was in a wheelchair after, but anyway, she was here on the site and heard about the ADA and I put some links up and all that kind of stuff. She read up on it and she wrote a letter to management and say, hey, this is the list of things that I need and this is the law that supports this, uh, my request. And so she went down the list in her letter of these are the things that are obstacles for me in my apartment. And this is the law that I'm looking at that would support my request. The management turned around and said, yes, we will do that for you. <laughs> so she was absolutely shocked. <laughs> I'm like, go, <laughs> go, girl, you go. <laughs> you know, so she sent a letter. She wasn't threatening <laughs> to take him to court. She was just saying, hey, these are my needs. I'm in a wheelchair. These are the obstacles I face in my apartment. And I would really appreciate if we could work something out. And they said, absolutely. Because <laughs> they know what the next step is. So I'm hoping it's gone well for her. I haven't heard of an update. Uh, but they were going to do some upgrades on the building anyway. And so um, they need to do it regardless. You know, she made the request. She put in the rules and regulations and the laws that supported her request. And management said, yes, no problem. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> they were going to do some upgrades on the building anyway. But even if they weren't doing upgrades, they would have to say yes, um, because otherwise they would go to court, because <laughs> that's the next step. But she did it the right way. First, dialogue, you send an, a mail, you send a letter, you know, well written with the ra rules and regulations and the laws that support her request. And then they said, yeah, <laughs> sure, we'll do that. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that the, for this person it really worked out well and that her apartment is what she ever dreamed for. Um, <laughs> and in terms of housing and, and apartments, it's really difficult to find apartments that are accessible. It really is. And there's a whole law in the ADA regarding uh, apartments. So uh, you can look that up. You know, the law is very large, very big. It covers a lot of areas. Um, but it's 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 well divided up, and so you can look at the federal and you can look at the state and see um, how that how that looks for you if you have a situation. Housing, housing, regular houses is the same thing. If you're looking to buy a house, it's it's very problematic. So you probably want to balance out, you know, how much you're going to pay for the house versus how much you're going to have to adapt that house for your needs. So, you know, that's one of the things you can say in the negotiations that, you know, it might be, you know, sight unseen kind of situation, but, you know, you want to make sure that what you pay for the house is, you know, leaves you a, a, a pouch of money so you can go in and make it uh, a adaptable for you because it's very difficult. You're going to be in the market forever if you're hoping and looking for something that is uh, accessible because there isn't. Uh, you know, I don't know really if, if someone is selling a house and a person with a disability comes in and wants to buy the house, but they have to adapt it. Um, 
I don't I don't know the rules and regulations for that, uh, but um, I would think not if it's sight unseen or if it's you know you're in the market you can say well I'll buy it if and I'm sure there's negotiations I'll buy it if you're able to uh, rehab this bathroom or um, I'll buy this house if you're willing to adapt the kitchen for me or you know th and they might do it or do you want to play it safe and, and do it yourself because you know there are organizations special organizations that know how have the skills to really adapt a bathroom or really adapt a kitchen they know how to do those things and take out stairs and all that kind of stuff so it's flat and accessible for you that's something you might want to tackle to make sure it's it's well done and done correctly so you know those are the things you have to play around with in the ADA but absolutely museums and absolutely libraries you know because it's where the public can go parks uh, entertainment uh, arenas absolutely have to be accessible by law <laughs> that's what we say but you know some places are not and can be you can start the dialogue but if they're refusing then you go to the to the to the courts um, because it's supposed to be I've heard the venues uh, public venues for entertainment a lot of times are not they don't they, you can get in but there's no accessible bathrooms or there's accessible bathrooms, but you can't get in. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, movie theaters have been getting much better. I can say I can say that for myself um, that I I go to the movies and a lot of times they have a section now for people with wheelchairs um, and their bathrooms are usually they have one stall or two that are accessible. So um, you know. And the other thing is the struggle to figure out what is accessible and what is not accessible. Uh, and there are apps, and I'll leave those uh, names of those apps down below. Uh, those apps need to be built up so any organization you go to, um, you, you can fill it in so that people know that that place is accessible in these areas. You know, it might be accessible in this area, but not in this area. So. Uh, that is a good thing to put in the app. You can put in the location and then put notes in there to let other people know it was great, but, or it was great all the way around, and that helps the, the facility and helps you, helps the public. So there are a few apps that you can use for that. So you're not struggling and calling around and trying to figure out where you can take your family and where it will be fun uh, to go. Uh, that it's accessible. So uh, that's one thing that <laughs> I forgot to tell my family when I was with them, you know, because they were looking around for um, accessible places. <coughs> there was one restaurant that they really wanted to go to, and it had stairs, so um, they they helped me down the stairs, <laughs> which is a little precarious, and out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, the restaurant saw that, so hopefully, you know, they will... Um, make arrangements next time for it to be more accessible. The hotel th where I stayed was awesome, you know, when I visited my family, but the bathroom wasn't accessible, so. <laughs> so it's just, you know, it, it's one thing or the other, you know, that people don't understand. It's more than just rolling in. It's more than just being able to get in. It's it's bathrooms and it's it's, you know, taking away the stairs and it's taking away other obstacles. And people don't understand all of that. And so it's, it's really important to understand how much this, um, this organization understands of the ADA. And a lot of times it takes some education. And that's why I say the dialogue is important because then the education happens and you know you can show them a sheet you can show them you know then the letter writing or whatever needs to happen there but the ada is on your side and there's no reason for you to be afraid to take anyone to court 
if you did the good thing of the dialogue and the letter writing, then awesome. They didn't pay attention. They refused. And this is a building, and this would apply in the United States. I'm afraid that in Europe, there are other rules and regulations in countries in Africa. There are other rules and regulations that I am not aware of. So, you know, people on that side of the world would have to look at what is in the law, you know, and how much that law, how many teeth does that law have <laughs> now? Now, the ADA here in the United States has been used a lot, so it has quite a bit of teeth. You know, I say to lawyers, the law, the law that was written has no teeth unless it's used, unless people use it and become aware of its existence, because you can write as many laws as you want, but if you don't use it, then, then what is it good for? Does it really exist in society? So the ADA is really important to apply it, to use it, to talk about it, to educate other people about it. And it's a federal law, it's a state law, and uh, so that needs, needs to be used, needs to be talked about. And people who, <laughs> there was a building in New York, it was a museum, and I'm not kidding you. They built it just recently, about five years ago, and they did not make it accessible. <laughs> <laughs> the losses just came flying. <laughs> they were hit hard. So I don't know what happened to that museum. I'd have to look it up because that's, you know, public information. But I, I'm sure they got slammed <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, building something way after 1990, and today they made it just recently, that museum, and they were so proud of the museum, but they did not make it accessible. <laughs> they were slammed with lawsuits. <laughs> so that's what I mean when you write a law that protects a certain group of population and it's not used, then what is it for? What is it good for, you know? Uh, but <laughs> you cannot build anything today and not make it accessible. You cannot build anything that the public can go and not make it accessible because you, you <laughs> you'll get a tap on the shoulder and then the next thing you know you'll be in court <laughs> so because that law does have teeth it has been used uh, a lot since 1990 and I'm telling you the law is on your side so don't be afraid do it the good way the dialogue way the letter writing way first so to show your goodwill and then if they don't respond and they ignore you, then, then you gotta go through the courts. And don't be afraid of it because you can always consult a lawyer and if the lawyer says, oh yeah, we can, <laughs> we can get this done. Yes, you, everything is on your side. You did all the good things you were supposed to do and, and this organization or agency or you know, a uh, place of, of public venue did not respond to your request, then yeah, absolutely, that's, that's uh, candy, chocolate candy for the lawyer. <laughs> Preferably you want to go to a lawyer who is familiar with the ADA. Um, there are lawyers that specialize in the ADA. Um, and so if you went to a lawyer just to consult, you know, this is what I did so far and, and I, I really want to use this venue and I talked to them, I wrote them a letter, they won't respond to any of this, so, and the lawyer would, will die laughing and said, absolutely, we need to go to the courts and get this turned around. Because what you do will help a whole lot of other people in wheelchairs and crutches and, and who have other disabilities, people who are blind. So this is, it's really important to know that the ADA is a very important tool, has teeth, and um, it needs to be out there, and we need to educate, you know, people with the, with the venues uh, that if they're gonna build anything, it has to be accessible, and that you will love to use their venue, um, but to remember accessibility all the way through. 
and um, then they will, you know, they say, nah, we don't have money for that. You do have money for that because otherwise they're going to end up, you know, sitting in court and paying the, <laughs> the fees for the court and then paying all the money you needed to pay to make your venue accessible. <laughs> so you end up paying double. So this is what I really wanted to say in my <laughs> first video that I did long time ago to talk to you about the ADA and where it covers. And it's wherever the public can go. So not so much the private venues, but you know, even those venues, you know, if if there's there's a goodwill dialogue, they'll make it they'll make it accessible, you know. But anywhere, any venue that's that's public, that has to be ADA compatible from day one. So, so please, I I want to request for you to really look at the ADA, really get to know it and how it supports you, how it um, protects you, and um, you know, have in your head, have in your mind, you know, if there's a venue out there that you really want to use, that you really want to take your family to, and it's not accessible, you know, start that dialogue with the venue and let them know, hey, I, I can bring a lot of people here. I can bring a lot of friends, a lot of family, and it would be awesome, but your venue is not accessible, so, so how do we work this out, you know? And, and remember, you know, any building before 1990, uh, before 1990 could be excluded, but where there's a will, there's a way, and the manager might have goodwill, you know, be more than willing to make an area where it's accessible and do something for the bathrooms, and, and bingo, you, you, you just open doors for a lot of people and yourself. So this is what I wanted to <laughs> really say in the last video that I started babbling about the ADA. <laughs> It was not very comprehensive uh, situation. But <laughs> I have a story of goodwill uh, that I experienced at a restaurant. Now, a restaurant is where the public can go, and it needs to be accessible. And I'm deaf, so, you know, I had my uh, service dog with me, and a family invited me to dinner. So, <coughs> great Italian restaurant in uh, the Phoenix area. And so we were all standing in line because we, there was a waiting, uh, waiting line. So we were. Uh, one of the waitresses came up, and whispered to the family something. I didn't hear them, and uh, my service dog was just, you know, looking around and smelling all that good food. <laughs> and we were just patiently waiting, <laughs> and the family started really laughing. <laughs> They were just roaring about something. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. My service dog looked at me like, what's going on? <laughs> but anyway, we went in the restaurant, and we were seated. And, and Johnny, of course, he just crawled under the table and lied down like he was supposed to. <laughs> and so I said, what were you all laughing about a few moments ago? He said, oh, the waitress came and asked you if you needed a menu in Braille. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we all laughed again. <laughs> I said, did you tell him I'm deaf, not blind? <laughs> he said, yes, we did. <laughs> but there's a gesture of, you know, the awareness of ADA and assisting the person even before they need the help. <laughs> Wrong choice of menu, but... <laughs> But there you go, you know, in terms of uh, goodwill, and not even goodwill, but good training and uh, knowledgeable about, you know, we do have menus in Braille, which would be uh, absolutely important for a restaurant to have. Uh, and I'm glad they had it. You know, I said to the waitress, thank you so much for asking, and I hope you, you continue to offer that for those who are uh, visually impaired and, and can read Braille. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this case, I don't need one. <laughs> so <laughs> I teased her a little bit, but I did praise her for you know her offer and asking the question. <laughs> so 
It was just a, a, a very good gesture and, and very good training. So let's talk, let's talk ADA. And if you have run into venues or situations where you really wanted to go to a certain theater, that you wanted to go to a certain restaurant, you wanted to go to a certain park, whatever it was, and you were not able to get in, or you know, how do you start the dialogue in your own apartment situation? You know, let's talk and and see where it needs to go. All right, remember, ADA is on your side.